The movie begins with Roy Pulver was once a member of the Delta Force, but he now finds himself ensnared in an unusual predicament. Each morning, he awakens to discover that it is the same day all over again, a bewildering repetition that has occurred for the 139th time. When he meets his demise, the day resets, and he must commence anew. At 7 a.m., a man launches a lethal assault on his apartment, accompanied by a helicopter carrying a marksman that peppers his living space with gunfire. Nonetheless, Roy possesses the knowledge to evade these assailants. He executes a daring leap from his window onto a truck filled with sand, a leap that required 22 unsuccessful attempts before he mastered it. Subsequently, he absconds in a stolen vehicle to evade two more pursuers, Pam and Esmeralda. They relentlessly chase him through the city, but he knows how to outmaneuver them, provided he doesn't overlook the peril of an oncoming bus. Additional assassins are hot on his trail as well, including Guan Yin, Kaboom, Smiley, the German twins, and an enigmatic doppelganger known as Roy No. 2. On occasion, Roy manages to eliminate some of these threats, yet their compatriots invariably track him down and terminate him in the end. Roy speculates that his former spouse, Gemma, might hold the answers to his inexplicable predicament. However, when he contacts her workplace, he is met by her superior, Colonel Clive Venter, who claims she perished in an accident. Suspicion brews within Roy, suggesting that he might be responsible for her demise, though he never survives long enough to uncover the truth. On those rare days when Roy eludes both the bus and Pam, he seeks refuge in Jake's diner. He must act swiftly to secure a seat at the bar, lest Dai Feng, a master of the sword, claim the last available spot. Roy consumes copious amounts of alcohol and engages in conversations with a man named Dave, who delves into discussions of security and conspiracy theories. However, at precisely 1247, the assassins unfailingly locate him and terminate him within the confines of the diner. He has never surpassed this critical juncture. If he foregoes the diner altogether, his demise occurs earlier in the day. Roy has explored various divergent paths, but they invariably culminate in the same grim outcome. Before the inception of this bewildering time loop, Roy paid a visit to Gemma at Dino Laboratories. She had summoned him ostensibly for a job opportunity, but her interest appeared to lie elsewhere as she took his measurements and collected a sample of his hair. During their conversation, Roy inquired about a peculiar machine she was working on, a contraption with the potential to bring about catastrophic consequences if misused. The subject of their child, who remained oblivious to Roy's paternity, also arose. Gemma concurred that Roy deserved a chance to be a part of their son's life. However, their dialogue was abruptly interrupted by Brett, who emphasized the restricted nature of the area and declared that they were not currently seeking new employees when Roy attempted to submit his resume. Upon departing, Gemma cryptically alluded to sending him a significant birthday present and mentioned the word, Osiris. Meanwhile, Venter harbored reservations about Roy's newfound awareness of their experiments, prompting him to task Brett with addressing the situation, employing ordinary individuals instead of trained soldiers. In the evening, Roy frequented a bar and encountered a woman named Alice with whom he enjoyed a pleasurable evening. Nonetheless, the bartender observed Roy's lingering preoccupation with his ex-wife. While Roy was in Alice's company, Gemma reached out to him, expressing an urgent need for his assistance, but Venter abruptly terminated the call. Roy opted to remain with Alice instead of reconnecting with Gemma. While Roy was engrossed with Alice, Gemma collected samples of his hair and blood, sealing them within a tube and inserting them into her enigmatic machine. Venter, monitoring this sequence of events via security cameras, concluded that Gemma had gone rogue and dispatched Brett to confront her. This sequence of events represents the last ordinary day Roy experienced before the onset of the perplexing time loop. Now, he has finally unveiled the birthday gift from Gemma. A book entitled, I Said and Osiris, accompanied by a note bearing the inscription, Time Waits for No Man. He becomes so engrossed in the book that he completely forgets about evading the assassins pursuing him. It takes two more attempts at life before he finally escapes with the book thanks to the discovery of a previously unnoticed button in the car he routinely commandeers. After pressing this button, the car accelerates significantly, causing Roy to miss the exit leading to Jake's diner. Instead, he ends up at the underground Atlanta Mall, where he sits down to read the book left by Gemma. The narrative of Iset and Osiris within the book baffles him, but his reading is interrupted when he spots his son Joe buying something from an older kid. Realizing that Joe is the only family he has left after Gemma's demise, he follows Joe into an arcade that hosts esports tournaments. 
Unbeknownst to him, his presence near the screens causes them to glitch. He approaches Joe and chastises him for skipping school, also inquiring about his recent purchase. Joe reveals that they are just cards, not any illegal substances. Roy then invites him to lunch, and as they exit the building, he notices the time, which is 12.50, the longest he has ever survived since the time loops began. Upon careful analysis of what he did differently this time, he finally concludes that they must have placed a tracker on him. The metal walls of the diner and the underground setting of the mall seem to have shielded him from danger. Just then, the assassins arrive and open fire on Roy. He uses his body to shield Joe from the bullets and dies while telling his son that he is his father. As the day resets once more, he questions the intruder in his apartment about the tracker's location, but the man refuses to divulge its whereabouts. Roy subsequently arrives at the diner and proceeds directly to the restroom to closely examine his body, going to great lengths, including checking inside himself, but still cannot locate the tracker. Recalling that Dave possesses relevant knowledge, he queries Dave about potential tracker hiding spots. Dave suggests the teeth, triggering a memory of Alice, the dental hygienist, who put him to sleep in a dentist's chair while Brett observed, she had been complicit in their trap all along. After acquiring more alcohol and pliers from Jake, Roy joins Dave in the bathroom and begins extracting his teeth until he locates the tracker, only to be killed a second later by Roy number two. With each reset, he interrogates Alice, who discloses that Brett paid her to implant the tracker before departing. Roy follows his routine until he reaches Jake's diner, where he removes the tooth containing the tracker and uses it as bait in an abandoned building. His plan succeeds when Pam arrives, but she refuses to reveal her employer's identity. Roy dispatches her with her own gun, which once belonged to a certain German dictator. Knowing that Gemma had a purpose for involving him in all this, but unable to turn back time far enough to save her, Roy is left with a sense of meaninglessness. Revenge becomes his sole driving force, and he enjoys his newfound freedom without the tracker, eliminating all the assassins who have been pursuing him. Using a phone he took from Kaboom, he contacts Brett and vows to locate him and Venter. Roy heads to the laboratories and attempts to force the door open with his car, only to crash and be shot by Brett. A series of loops ensues, during which Roy repeatedly devises different plans to infiltrate Dino, such as sending his car with explosives and posing as Roy number two. Stealing an ID eventually allows him to gain access, but it takes several attempts to master the techniques needed to evade the guards and security cameras. Once he successfully smuggles weapons inside, the guards cease to be a problem, but his next hurdle is Guan Yin, whose sword fighting skills prove too formidable for him to subdue with just wallets. Sometimes, he doesn't succumb quickly enough to the sword wounds, and Venter locates him, delivering the same lengthy, intricate speech about resetting history before ending his life. During one of these speeches, Roy discovers that the project's name is the Osiris Spindle. He realizes two crucial facts. Venter is unaware of its functioning, and Gemma orchestrates his involvement in it to make him Osiris and thwart Venter's plans. Empowered by Gemma's belief in him, Roy initiates a new series of loops with a fresh plan. After following his customary routine, which included discreetly removing a tracking device in the diner's restroom, he approaches Dai Feng with a request for sword lessons. She agrees, finding his intrigue compelling. Over several loops, he diligently trains under her guidance until he becomes skilled enough to surpass her. Expressing his gratitude for her tutelage, he once again infiltrates Dino. This time, instead of employing guns, he confronts Guan Yin with a sword, effortlessly parrying her every move. Playfully, he taunts her by severing her ponytail before ultimately impaling her with her own weapon. Brett and Venter make their entrance, but Brett swiftly meets his demise as Roy thrusts the sword into his forehead. A fierce hand-to-hand -hand combat ensues between Roy and Venter. When Venter attempts to reach for a firearm, Roy swiftly recovers his sword, anchoring Venter's hand to the floor. Amidst this confrontation, Roy articulates his belief that no one should arrogate the role of a deity and manipulate history, emphasizing the importance of leaving the past unaltered for the sake of learning from it. Venter, insinuating potential danger to Joe, provokes Roy's fury. After eliminating Venter, Roy retreats to his vehicle, racing to the mall, only to discover that he has arrived too late, his son lies lifeless. This tragic outcome, repeated across countless loops, intensifies his anguish. Struggling against the police, who deny him access to Joe's lifeless body, Roy is suddenly confronted with a brilliant light on the horizon, a harbinger of the world's impending end, just as Gemma had forewarned. 
Roy concludes that Gemma is likely deceased due to his abandonment and lack of response when she sought his aid. Now, their son is ensnared in this cataclysmic event. With the impending apocalypse rendering all efforts futile, Roy resigns himself to an apathetic existence, allowing assassins to repeatedly take his life. However, one fateful morning, the unrelenting cycle of violence snaps him out of his despondency. Determined to make the most of the time at his disposal, he returns to the mall, where he retrieves Joe for a day of bonding, filled with video games and shared meals, a ritual he repeats until the world's demise resets the day yet again. He wants to tell Joe he is his father, but he's too scared. During the 249th loop, Roy talks about Gemma's work, and Joe says he spoke to her early in the morning when she didn't come home. This surprises Roy because he thought she was killed at night. Now, he plans to save her. After resetting the day, he sneaks into the labs and shoots Venter and Brett for answers. Brett confesses they were trying to figure out what Gemma did to the Osiris spindle. It seems she messed it up, and now they can't control it. Venter realizes Roy can sneak in because the spindle is working, meaning Gemma made him the missing piece. Roy checks the security cameras and finds out Gemma died 14 minutes after waking up. To save Gemma in such a short time, Roy shoots himself to restart the day. He kills the first assassin as usual, but this time, he jumps out of the window into a helicopter. He kicks out the gunman, threatens the pilot, and heads to Dino. He takes the gunman's machine gun and kills the assassins outside. Then he takes a gun and Guan Yin's sword from the pile of bodies. Roy shoots his way to Gemma's lab, where Brett is attacking her. He quickly kills both Brett and Venter. Gemma asks how many tries it took him to get to her. Roy lies, saying it was only one, but Gemma figures out the truth as he tells her about Joe's safety. Gemma explains that the spindle can't be stopped, only restarted. She made it match Roy's DNA, so if he enters it, the day should reset for the last time. Roy kisses Gemma and enters the Osiris spindle, hoping it will restart the day one final time.